Okay, Brad and I have seen thousands of patients with knee replacement. Oh, yes. What? These are the top five things we have learned. Stick around. Bob and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. All right, the first thing we have discovered, Brad, is that patients want to be in control. They don't like it when we actually stretch oh. their knee. Yeah, because we can't feel it, so we yeah. want to go keep going. Yeah, so, people tighten up. It's a natural reaction. Right. So what we have found is it works really well is the knee glide. That, that'll work. Puts the uh, patient in control. So the, the knee glide slides, and you do this in bed. It works very well like that. And typically, it gets a little tight. The, other, the person can either take their leg, other healthy leg, and... Give it a little range of motion. And even better yet, if you take a strap or a belt like this, and then you have control of your hands and stretch and back and forth. Then when you're in control, you can relax the muscles better. Right. The knee range is better. Uh, it's a good situation. We'll show it in the chair, too. That's right. Yeah, so on the floor and this is often typical that is not even done a lot because it's without a knee glide it's not uh, it's a little bit difficult but this works very nicely as well and then you can take this foot push on the ankle you can go or down push on, on the plate yep and there stretch and really get that range of motion and we've had people having difficulties and we get the knee glide on there and it just works better because another reason is you can put it at an angle and go downhill, and that can not only make the knee work uh, a little more uh, relaxed, but the ankle oftentimes works better. Oh, over there, hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had a patient bed that actually we couldn't get beyond 97 degrees. Yep. But when we got the knee glide, we could get up to 100 some. Right, that was a number of years ago, yeah. and we just started we working with it. Yep. Right. So very good. Number two, Brad, do not listen to other patients. Everybody has their advice, and they're going to tell you they either did worse or better, and it's just not going to help you because your knee is way different. Mm -hmm. If you have both knees done, one is going to be much easier than the other. That's the way anatomy works. Right. I've had people say, you know, they'll be in with, Two people with their knees done, and one person's in there for two weeks, and the other person's in there for the same amount of time, and their knee is not moving right. near as well, and they get discouraged. discouraged right. And they think, why am I not doing as well as this? Or because my, my sister or my aunt said it only took her three weeks to get to 120 degrees, and I'm three weeks, and I'm not even to 90 yet. Every, they all take time, some faster, some others, right. and the vast, vast majority come out very Do well. Good. Yep. Yeah, just ignore the other yep, two. The other absolutely. Song. Number three, Brad, we have found that range of motion is much more important than strengthening. Your strength will come. Right. But I had a surgeon that said, this is a race against scar tissue. Right. Scar tissue is being laid down, and it... Your knee can get tight if you're not working on it. And that's why it's nice to be able to do it lying down in bed and, as and, well as right. uh, seated. Whatever way works better to get the range of motion. Uh, and we're talking about getting it straight right. as well as the bending bend. it. Some people think, well, we just need to get it to bend, bend, bend. But oftentimes you'll be, you know, 10 degrees of being straight. And that extra few degrees is really important. Now, you can important. focus on both. Yeah, absolutely. You can focus on range of motion. But if you're going to focus on one, let it be range of motion. Exactly. Range of motion, that's what PTs are all about. There we go. Okay, number four, Brad. Mm -hmm. Don't let your pain get out of control. I mean, I see so often people go, ah, I want to see how I'm doing. They'll get up to a eight or a nine, and they can't get down then. Eight or nine what? Uh, out of ten. <laughs> One out of ten. Yeah, so ten over ten is where you're screaming right. in pain. One or zero, there's no pain. So if you're not familiar with that. Yeah, I would say when it gets up to a four, jump yeah. in there. And all, we always tell our patients, make sure you take your pain meds about an hour before right. therapy so you get a better workout and you have better results. You take them on a regular basis. Yeah, do them as the doctor prescribes. They, they, if you have problems, they'll... Talk to them, talk to the nurse. They'll get you right where you need to be. Also, cold packs can be a good pain right. or, you know, 
pain relief. It's and part of your arsenal. Yeah, they'll, they'll do that right away in right. the hospital. Number five, the last one, Brad. Uh, we find a lot of patients, they get anxious mm. and they try to progress too rapidly from like a, cane, a walker yep. to a cane yeah. or from a cane to nothing. Right. I and, don't need this anymore. Give me that right. cane. And, then. and what happens, the yeah. knee gets really sore and your range of motion goes down. Right. And we just said how important that is. Right. So hopefully you're seeing a therapist while you're going through this because they'll uh, guide you and do some tests so they and, know this to that is safe. And if you're not, just take it easy. Be it's careful. It's okay to be on a walker longer. It's yeah. okay to be on a cane longer. Another week or so is no big deal. Good luck with that knee replacement.